Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Seeds of Victory Global Bible Study. I'm Dr. Kenneth Hyatt, and this is Pastor Cindy Hyatt, and we want to thank you for being with us. We are so glad you're taking time out of your busy day, particularly during the summer uh, when you could be outside doing all kinds of things, uh, taking the time to be with us and gather around the table and, and uh, have home Bible study. And I think God will make it well worth your while uh, because God recognizes and we recognize that you're taking the time and investing the time. Mm -hmm. You're not spending it, you're investing it right. in the Word of God. And so uh, God, God is well able to give the hundredfold return and make it well worth your while. So I want to thank you for being with us. And whether you're watching live or by archive, uh, I hope you'll be very, very blessed by the things we're going to get into tonight. So it's going to be good. We're going to have a good time. Yes, we are. In the Word. In the Word. And so you yes, get your Bible and your notebook and to gather, us, gather with us around the table. Uh, we got plenty of room. And uh, we treat this just like home Bible study is all the old... Uh, they're not newbies. What would you call them? All the oldies. <laughs> <laughs> As you well know, or as the as the the Bible study family well knows, we we're very laid back and mm -hmm. relaxed, and mm -hmm. and uh, just well, you know, we we did Bible studies for years, just in people's homes and mm -hmm. our home, and and mm -hmm. uh, that's what we've endeavored to do online. Just, I mean, you supply the popcorn and the snacks and the <laughs> and the pitcher of tea and. Mm -hmm. And we'll supply the teaching and the ministry and whatever needs to be done. So, mm -hmm. you know, really that was one of the original intents of the home by, of this this mm -hmm. outreach was for people to invite people into their home and to have home Bible study. And because uh, a lot of people would like to host a Bible study, but they don't know where to start or begin, and who mm -hmm. do we get, and who's going to teach it, and who's going to do the study, and who's going to do the work. And that really was the original intent of, of what we had in mind when mm -hmm. we began this, this aspect of ministry was for people to have people come into their home and, and to create a fellowship uh, where they were mm -hmm. in their house. And that's one of the reasons we, we endeavor to quit at 9 o'clock <laughs> um, because that way the, the original intent was we would teach for two hours and then we would uh, after nine o'clock well we'd shut down and then they could pray or answer questions and we'd deal with questions on Facebook or whatever the case may be but kind of went a little different kinda direction yeah turned a different yeah direction. it did. went mm -hmm. a different way mm -hmm. and next Tuesday we will have been officially doing the webcast for six years mm -hmm. On the exact same day. Yes. It'll be mm -hmm. September the 3rd. Mm -hmm. And we started on September the 3rd, 2013. And uh, I don't know. I, man, we had worked on this thing for. You had worked. Well, I had worked on it for about. I prayed for you while you worked. <laughs> I had. He well, worked long, long, when, hard hours when we started every this, day. When we started on this, when the Lord dropped, downloaded this this uh, ministry, this concept, first thing I did is I went, scrapped our old website, found a new web host, rebuilt the website from scratch, uh, set up an online store at the time. We weren't doing podcasts. We were uh, selling the CDs. And uh, well, it wasn't actually where we, we were selling the CDs, but actually what we were doing back then, it was the technology back then was um, if, you, if you bought a message online, then you were sent an email. I had it set up where you were automatically sent an email with a link and then you downloaded it from there. And then later on, we went to the podcast in 2015 and uh, God has really been blessing the podcasts. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had, I think within the last 30 days, we've had somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 downloads. And uh, so, mm -hmm. anyway, 
The Lord is good. Six years. Six years. And we signed that first contract for three years, wondering if we would make it three years. We would, well, <laughs> yeah, because back back there in 2013, this was a huge step of faith because mm -hmm. we would we would be obligated for 500 a month extra. Our our budget would increase mm -hmm. 500 a month, and um, that was a big that was a big it was a step. step for us. Yeah. And then it kept increasing till it was nearly 800. Well, when we when our one first mm -hmm. contract was up, we increased mm -hmm. the output. We went from 1.5 gigabyte upload to 10 gig. Was it meg? Whatever megabyte upload, and um, then it went back down. The way technology works, it, when we we just this year. We signed with Frontier. We got out of Verizon. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We got out of Verizon and went with Frontier. Our bill dropped 200 a month. We now pay less than when we started this in 2013. Mm -hmm. And now we have 20 meg. We, <laughs> we doubled that. So we went mm -hmm. from 1.5 to 20 mm -hmm. upload. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway... It's been an interesting journey. So here we are six years Ta -da! later. It's and most of you have been with us yeah. this whole time. Yeah, you have. And that's a blessing. Yeah, it is. That's a joy to have people who are willing to take out the time. And we know that it is an effort. An effort. Mm -hmm. We know that. We know that it's not easy to shut out everything else for two, two and a half hours on Tuesday for Bible study for Bible study but we appreciate it we appreciate all mm -hmm. of you and our in-house folks of course Monty and Beryl have been here what almost let's see y'all been with us almost five years huh? I'm, I'm almost certain it's almost five years what in, ja in January <laughs> won't Has it, it been that long no no five years is it four Anyway, y'all been with us a while, and you've been coming ever since you've been with us. So thank you all for being a part of what mm -hmm. God has Amen. given us to do. Our, our assignment is not complete if we don't have you. Yeah, absolutely. And we can't fulfill it and without we, you. And we know you closet watchers are out there. <laughs> we know you're there because we have... Uh, Right around twenty-five thousand views, for, uh, in from, you know, from the beginning, and so we know you didn't get all. You all didn't get online at once. We know that. Well, maybe Trixie did most Trix, of that. Trixie may have done a bunch <laughs> of that. Um, and we are pushing. We started the 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 uh, podcasts in twenty fifteen. That's hard to believe. That's been four years. Be four years October. And uh, we have almost 6,000 downloads. Mm -hmm. And so, and we don't know. So there are people that are listening yeah. that are not letting us know yeah. and don't have any contact with us because we don't know who you are. But we're glad you are a part of what God has told us oh, to good. do. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you need some water? I'm good. I, I oh, brought okay. my own uh, hibiscus tea. Uh, Loopy's taking care of us over there. I appreciate Loopy and that. Yes, taking care of us. They, they haven't been coming quite as long, but they've been pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. since yes, they've, been, they've been real consistent. And, um, Hungry folks, absolutely ready to receive the word. And Miss Lucille said she's ready to listen to it again because she didn't get it all absorbed on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So she's ready was, to listen. to There was a to lot it. to it. Yeah, and uh, it's, we're we're. I won't say breaking some new ground, but we're going some different directions. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, who we so, got online so far? Online, we have Mr. Burl Hart, Graham America. Hey, Hermano. I'm glad you got your power back up, man. Yeah. That's good. And uh, Burl is booked to go back to Campeche, mm -hmm. and he'll be there for right a Right around Thanksgiving. Yeah, around Thanksgiving for a couple of weeks. Uh, Robert Davis is here. And hey, we're brother. So I'm glad, glad you're you are. here. Awesome. And let's see, there is Miss Diane. Good. Yes, we are on. She says, are we on? I hope we're... No, we're not. 
Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Don't, don't kind of like last that. week. We no. talked and talked and talked yeah. and talked, and nobody heard yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, we're on this time. Miss Francis is here from Hamilton. Hey, girl. I'm glad you're here. And Ms. there's Miss Lisa yeah. Allison. Well, well hello, good. Lisa. Good, good. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Lisa, was that y'all's land that burned? Um, I think they have the fire under control. Uh, the Forestry Service came in this morning and they did the fire break. They had a bad fire out south of town and Lisa thought it might be on the back side of their property out there. Hmm. Uh, Kelly Brady Person is here. Hey Brady Person. And uh, let's see. You know, talking about everybody. And I had a thing and it was on Facebook. It's one of those memories things. And it was talking about, and I had posted on there about um, that we were waiting on Verizon to finish connecting with us and that we were going to be, as uh, soon as they were done, we would be hot. We'd let everybody know. And uh, we'd, do test runs. we'd do test runs and all that. Who and helped I, us? Trixie Lisa, and Lisa? Lisa and Trixie helped us. Helped us figure out how to, yeah. to do this yeah. and make sure we had it mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And there is Miss Lucille. Hey, Lucille, I'm glad you're here. And Good. Lisa says, no, it was next door. Okay, so does that mean it was at Lucille's? I hope not. Um, all right. I'm glad it wasn't your property, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we've got a good group to start with. We're glad you're here. Very good. Very, yes. very good. And Did I, I say our in-house folks are here? Okay. All right. And I, I, and Brother Robert, I'm glad you're here because I think some of the things I'm, I'm going to get into... Um, if nothing else, it will confirm how God is dealing with you in your spirit on this journey that He is taking you on. I think, I think it will apply to your situation. Not that it won't apply to everybody else, but I was when the, when the, um, I was thinking about the webcast, I thought this really is going to be right up Robert's alley. I mean, just from the way the Lord is leading him in some areas, so. I think it's going to be good. So, you guys ready? Okay, let's do it. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation being made manifest to your people. Mm -hmm. And I just thank you for a good, hungry group of people. Mm -hmm. I give you the praise and the honor for everything said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to go with me, please, to the book of Romans chapter 4. We're going to begin this week, and I think we will probably continue both next Sunday and next Tuesday, um, talking about the process of believing. Um, I, I didn't do this Sunday, but I'm impressed of the Lord, particularly with some um, folks that haven't been with us just to kind of bring you up to speed on this, this particular series. This is the, the sixth message in this series and uh, just simply because of scheduling, because we went to Spokane, because of different things, there are some messages that I have on the podcast page under the, under the current series folder that are not on the webcast. But the basis of this, this whole series, the series is called Transition from Faith to Faith, as, as you already know. But for those of you that don't, this, this series is based on a word that I received from the Lord on October 1st, 2018. And I've read it every time. I didn't read it Sunday. Uh, but I want to read it and kind of bring everybody up to speed with where God is taking us. And that, of course, this word has to do with one of the reasons we actually went across country to Spokane and so on. But October the 1st, 2018, the Lord said this. He said, I'm calling you out of the faith movement. He said, I'm not calling you out of faith, but out of that movement to another movement that I will show you. And he gave me Genesis 12, 1 through 3, where God called Abraham 
out of his country, away from his kindred, away from his father's house, into a land that God would show him. And then the Lord went on to say, there is another move coming that has not yet come about because the revelation behind it is yet to be revealed or yet to be released. And I believe that revelation is coming. I believe God is allowing us to get our feet wet. I believe we're crossing that threshold into some new things in God. Every move of God is founded on revelation or on, or on a revelation. And as I've shared with you, revelation is, is intervention. And so God is intervening, not only with us, but God is intervening in the body of Christ in some areas. And God is, is doing a reset in a lot, of, a lot of different people's lives, just bringing things mm -hmm. into divine order because uh, we need to be with His program. We need to be with His mm -hmm. purpose, His plan. And uh, so in order to get that accomplished, God is, is setting some things in order. Okay. With that said, uh, there's a lot we've covered over the past few weeks I can't go into, but part of uh, God taking us and doing this transition is the fact that we are having to rearrange the way we think. Uh, and in fact, we're part of this, and I've done it over the last week and this week in particular, going back and looking at some things regarding faith and just reinvestigating, reassessing. Uh, like when you were first filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, the man that ministered the Holy Ghost to you said, forget everything that you know. Baptist background, forget it all and l just be open. And the Lord will bring back what's true. The Lord will bring back what you need to know. And, and He did that. He took you mm -hmm. down to the foundation and rebuilt I mean the only thing you were sure of at that point is Jesus is Lord mm -hmm. and that's a good foundation to start from and uh, so anyway that's what we're doing where faith is concerned now again we're dealing with the process of believing God and you need to realize that believing is a process and of course, the word believe is, in the Engl is an English word or is an English verb. And of course, with it being a verb, that means it is an action word. And so believing is not static. Believing uh, implies action. Believing implies process. And it may be a process that takes days and weeks and months and years uh, certainly as in the case of Abraham. Or it can be something that takes place in just a split second of time, but it's still a process. And for example, in uh, John chapter 8 and verse 30, verses 30 through 32, uh, Jesus was preaching and there were many that instantly believed on him. It says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So in just a moment of time, they began to believe in Messiah. And like I said, it can happen very quickly, or it can happen over a period of time. I think all of us have areas of life where in some areas it's, it's a drawn out process and in some areas it's, you know, pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, regardless of the length of time, it is still a process. And so we're looking at um, this process of believing God. Now, one of the things that where God had really started rearranging my thinking uh, when it comes to believing. Of course, if you go into the Greek language, the, the, the Greek word for faith is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. 
And then the word believe is the verb form of that, pistuo, P-I-S-T-E-U-O, I I believe. But, of course, so certainly believing is connected, related to faith. Faith being a noun, believe being a verb. Uh, But the Lord started showing me some things, and he began with this verse of Scripture. 1 Peter chapter 1. Okay. Need you to pop on screen there. Okay. Doesn't want to do that. Why don't you want to do that? Okay. Let me just read it to you. For whatever reason, it's not changing on screen. But let me just read this to you. 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 21 says, who by him, talking about Jesus, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, listen, that your faith and hope might be in God. Let me say that again. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. And one of the first things the Lord started dealing with me about is the fact that believing is not strictly a matter of faith. Believing is the working together of faith and hope. Let me say that again. Believing is the working together of faith and hope. Now, Romans chapter 4, let's just begin with verse 16. It says, Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end or to the intent, that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Verse 18 is what I want to get to. Listen. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. I want you to take note of the first part of that phrase in verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. And what we're going to talk about tonight predominantly is hope. And many of you have heard a lot of teaching on faith, and it's good teaching. But what I'm finding out from the Scriptures is that that if you are not uh, sufficiently developed in hope, or you don't have an accurate understanding of hope, then you're going to have a very, very difficult time with faith. And consequently, you're going to have a very difficult time believing hope. God. And so we're going to talk about hope. I'm going to try to shoot this on the screen. I don't know if it's stuck. Yes, apparently it is stuck. So, I'm going to read a couple of things to you. We may be just stuck without scriptures uh, on screen tonight. But I want to read Romans 4.18 out of the Amplified. And listen to how this is put together. It says, For Abraham... Human reason for hope being gone, hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations as he had been promised, so numberless shall your descendants be. Now I wanted to put the Amplified on here because I wanted wanted you to catch this first part. For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone. And again, in the King James, 
uh, who against hope, in other words, when there was no reason for natural hope, he still had hope. And his hope was in God. Now, um, there is a natural hope there is a hope that is of this world. There is a natural hope that is based on human reason. Uh, it's based on human opinion. Um, it's based on favorable circumstances. You know, if you have, a, you have something wrong in your body and you go to the doctor and the doctor who is supposed to be qualified and and know his business and so on, and he comes in and he says, it, it's going to be okay, we can, we can fix this. I mean, it's, it's not going to be that big a deal. It, it's not, you know, you may have thought it was cancer or some debilitating thing, and the doctor says, no, it's not fine, we can get that fixed. Well, that brings hope. Um, there is, uh, in the banking community, there's a phrase called blue sky. And, uh, you know, you go in and you talk to the banker and you say, uh, I'd like to take out a loan because this looks good and that looks good and it looks like this is going to work out and it looks like that's going to work out. And the banker says, I need something a little more solid than how you think it's going to be, <laughs> you know. But that kind of natural hope comes from circumstances and people's opinions and people's ideas and all of that kind of thing. So there is a natural hope. And natural hope, listen carefully, natural hope is purely a mental force. Purely a mental force. And when the Bible talks about hope, this is not, <laughs> this is not what the Bible is talking about when it talks about hope. Um, Bible hope is supernatural. Bible hope uh, is eternal. Again, I can't shoot this to you on the screen for whatever reason. Um, but 1 Corinthians 13, 13 in the New King James says, And now abides. We're talking about eternal things. <coughs> now abides faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. Well, certainly we need to talk about the love of God. But what I want to center up on here is the hope. Hope is an eternal spiritual force. Bible hope is not based on circumstances. It's not based on people's opinions, people's ideas. Bible hope is based on what God has said in His Word. And, and I'll just say this here. It's based specifically on His promises. And we'll, we're actually going to get more into that next week. But Bible hope is based on the promises of God. Now, go with me to two places. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. You're right there in <coughs> Romans 4. And go ahead and look up Hebrews chapter 11. Let's, let's, get, a, let's get a definition of hope give you a chance to look that up. The Ungers made it. Hey guys, I'm glad you're here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good. Very good. And I'm reprocessing this just a little bit while you're looking at that. Let me see what I have online here. Yay! We got it working again. Thank you, Lord. That's awesome. Yay! Okay. Good. Got the scriptures back. Romans chapter 8, verse 24, talking about hope, says, we, For we are saved by hope. 
Now, you don't hear many messages about that. You hear a lot of messages, we're saved by grace, we're saved by faith. <laughs> you know, but you don't hear a lot of teaching on the fact that we are saved by hope. But hope is an integral part of our salvation. It's an integral part of our deliverance. For we are saved by hope. Now, watch this, because this is going to tie in with how we want to define hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. If you can see it, you don't have to hope for it. That's what he goes on to say here. It says, For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? If you can see it, you don't have to hope for it. You have to use hope when you can't see it. Verse 25, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Mm -hmm. Now, the NET or the New English Translation says, For in hope we were saved. <clears throat> now, hope that is seen is not hope. Because who hopes for what he sees? You don't. But if we hope for what we do not see, then we, for, read again, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with endurance. Now, just tuck that away for a moment and go over now to Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 27. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. This is talking about Moses. Watch this. It says, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. Well, how do you see something invisible? By hope. By hope. Let me read this out of the NET. I left it up on the screen on purpose. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. Because who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, then we eagerly wait for it with endurance. Again, verse 27 of, of Hebrews 11. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Now, one other passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 17 and 18. says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Listen, while we look not mm -hmm. at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen or temp are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, let me just give you this definition. Hope is the ability to see the invisible. Hope <clears throat> is the ability to see the invisible. Next statement. Consequently, it is the ability to see into the eternal realm. Let me say that again. Hope is the ability 
to see the invisible. Consequently, it is the ability to see into the eternal realm. Or you could say it's the ability to see into the spirit realm. Because you see invisible <clears throat> things. Now, do I need to repeat any of that? Go ahead. I don't know. I'm not. You got. I mean, I'm. If I'm gauging you for writing, do I need to repeat it again? I'm writing the last two words. Okay. Let me say it one more time. Hope is the ability to see the invisible. Consequently, it is the ability to see into the eternal realm or into the realm of the Spirit. Now, you need to realize that you have, you possess two imaginations. You have, as you, as you well know, you have an imagination that is mental. Um, that, Im that, that mental imagination uh, has the ability to see images. You, you see images in the form of thoughts and ideas. You don't think in letters. You don't think in words unless you're remembering something you read but at the same time it's still many times a picture. picture yeah so you you think in pictures now there are sometimes that in your imagination things are auditory you hear words that have been spoken in your head but for the most part you think in pictures and those pictures in your mental imagination become thoughts and ideas but you also need to realize that you have an imagination that is connected to your spirit or your heart you say it either way you have an imagination that is connected to your spirit and that that part of your spirit that imagination part of your spirit is creative and the Bible has the, the term you generally find connected to that that part of your being is called in particularly in the King James it's referred to as the imagination of the heart that's not the imagination of your head that is the imagination of your heart. And the imagination of your heart is creative. And the images that come out of that area of your being determine your vision. They determine your purpose. And they become your passion. Let me say that again. The images that come out of that area of your spirit, the imagination of your heart, it's creative, and they determine your vision. They determine your purpose. And they, they establish your passion. We were talking earlier because... Uh, on the very day next week was the first day we started the webcast and uh, working on that for three months prior um, rebuilding the website I had to learn about cameras I had to learn about upload I had to learn about internet I had to learn about lighting that that was an adventure in itself but I had to learn some different things and I'm certainly no expert by any stretch of the imagination and I got to tell you, from the natural standpoint, I didn't care about any of it. <laughs> I didn't want to have to learn it. I have never really learned much of anything that wasn't connected to, to something that I had to do in ministry. <laughs> Other than that, I just soon watch TV. Anyway, <laughs> but but I the thing about it is, and, and Cindy made reference to praying for me, and she did. 
And I was getting up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, going 16, 18 hours a day, watching videos, learning, all that. But I was engraced to do it. And the reason I was engraced to do it, I was, and I get in these things like this where God is having me do something, and Cindy will tell you, I am focused and I am driven. Leave me alone. <laughs> Don't talk to me. I'm thinking about other stuff. <laughs> but anyway, I have a one track mind. I just, the, anyway. Um, but the, the whole motivation behind that was I could see it on the inside. I could see it on the inside. I could see exactly what we're doing right now. Now, thank God, we, we, you know, we already had the set because we had done television and whatnot. So there were a couple of things that, you know, we already had set up. God mm -hmm. had already made preparations mm -hmm. for it. We had done television um, 11 years before. No. 13, 13 from I'm, 4. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. Nine years, yeah. nine years before. We had done television 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. And we already had this set. And I got to tell you, uh, for both of us, we hated TV. Mm -hmm. We hated it. Mm -hmm. I guess it came across. <laughs> Evidently, we didn't yeah. have much viewership. <laughs> but it, well, it, it was not easy. It was not easy. It was because, very difficult. Because, because obviously it wasn't live like on the Internet mm -hmm. because it was what we were doing. We would come in here. And over a period of, we did it in one day or two days? We did it in one day, and we'd yeah. start about 8 in the morning and get done about 8 at night. Yeah. And we would tape six, six, pro, six weeks. We'd tape six programs mm -hmm. in one day. In one day. And I'm telling you what, that was tough sledding. But anyway. Yeah. And there was no draw on the anointing. No. Like with this, if you don't think your interest and your yeah, and Hunger. It, it comes across that little camera. Yes. If you don't think it doesn't make a difference, you are wrong. Because talking into that camera, and the only person here was the, the guy that was doing the camera work. Mm -hmm. And he was just doing camera work. And that was it. Yeah. And we were looking into the camera, and it was like, I can't even imagine a soul out there. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's really interesting from the very first time very first day we did this, I can look in that camera and I can envision many people mm -hmm. listening, learning, gleaning, mm -hmm. hungry, thirsty, ready to hear, mm -hmm. and getting revelation. And I could never do that exactly with television. I tried. I tried mm -hmm. to imagine people on the other side of mm -hmm. that camera. And sure enough, they weren't. And sure enough, I was right. <laughs> there was nobody out there. Yeah. But, but, um, so we only did it for two years. <laughs> yeah, we did it for two years. But oh. my my point is, is that became, because I could see it on the inside, the imagination of my heart, I could see this ministry on the mm -hmm. inside, and that became, uh, that beca again, that became the vision, that became the purpose, that became the passion. And so, uh, and, and again, this wasn't, it was not a mental picture. It was something that God had deposited inside our spirit. Now, the Bible, again, talks a great deal about um, the imagination of the heart. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 the King James says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Let me hop over here to the Amplified. I didn't put it on, on PowerPoint, but let me, let me share this with you. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. Everything mm -hmm. comes out of the imagination of the heart. And of course, Jesus talked about that. Matthew chapter 12, 
verses 34 through 36, you can see the creative aspect of this. It said, O generation of vipers, how, you, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, we could say the, the good treasure of the imagination of the heart, because, and you'll see this in a little bit, that's where the creative part is. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that, you sh that, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You know what? I, you know what idle words are? Words that don't mean nothing. Words that you just waste your mouth and your time with and other people's time <laughs> with it just mm -hmm. mouth talking just talking mm -hmm. and you'll stand in judgment for that but the words that come out of your heart will either produce good or produce evil depending on what's e what's in there because that part of your being is creative and of course Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, God spoke to Noah. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, the thoughts of his heart, the thoughts of his heart, the imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, we're not talking about thoughts that just go through your head. We're talking about what was coming out of their spirit being. It was their passion. It was their vision. It, everything within them was headed toward wickedness. And there was so much power being released out of that part of their being. If God had not intervened, it would have destroyed this planet. Now, if, if we're dealing with something that, well, that, 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 not anything to that, that's just, you know, just imagination, that, that, that not anything to do that, then God flooded this planet for no reason. But God recognized the power of the imagination of the heart. It, it sets the very course of your life. It sets the very course of of your being. Now when we were in Spokane, uh, Brother Dutch Sheets brought this up. I, I was aware of it when he, when he was talking about it because I started seeing this back in, the uh, first time I ever taught on this was in 1987, I believe. Um, I started looking at the imagination of the heart and I started looking at the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is yetzer. Not yeser. Yetzer. Y-E-T-S-A-R. Yetzer. The imagination. The yetzer of the heart. And I remember when I ministered on this the first time, I did a series called Programming. I think it was a series of two or three messages on uh, programming the yetzer. Because what you put in there is what will come out. And so, uh, when we were in Spokane, Brother Sheet started talking about the Yetzer, the imagination of the heart. And he made reference to the fact that this word in Hebrew is, has, a, has a creative element about it. And so I got my concordance out a day or two ago, and, and particularly in a Young's concordance, and did some looking at it. And this word is used in Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 16. <clears throat> Isaiah 29, 16, God is speaking. He said, surely you're turning of things upside down. Well, Jeremiah is speaking to God. He said, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Well, what does a potter do with clay? He molds it and shapes it. 
said, For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed, that's yet, sir. Shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, yet, sir, that he had no understanding? Now, it's interesting that that word, yet, sir, is translated imagination here in Genesis 6, 5 where we just read. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination, every yetzer of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And here it's translated framed or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it he had no understanding. Well, what do you do with a picture? You frame it. And the pictures that you have inside your spirit the imagination of the heart. You take, you take those pictures and you frame them with your words and you speak them out of your mouth and they produce. They come to pass. Because that is exactly how God created the heavens and the earth and you're made in the image and likeness of God. But I want you to see that this part of your being, this imagination of your heart, this yetzer, is creative in nature. And um, when the Word of God is put inside uh, that area, when you feed it down in there through meditation, and study. When you feed the yetzer, when you program that the yetzer, the imagination of the heart, it gives us the ability, it gives you the ability to see into the spirit realm. And that ability to see into the spirit realm is called It's very, very important in believing God that you have an understanding of the way that you're made. And you have to get an understanding of how hope works. Now, uh, hopefully you're still there in Hebrews 11. Back up to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's look at the classic scripture on faith. Have we got anything online? We've got some commentary, yeah. A little okay. while ago... Uh, Burl had said, blue sky in business is defined as, quote, not grounded in the realities of the present. Mm -hmm. Exactly. End quote. Good synonym for hope. Uh, he said, I think in words nearly exclusively. Guess I'm wired differently. Trixie says, I do that too. When I'm working on something and must be done, I get hyper-focused to the exclusion of everything, it's a blessing, but can also cause problems. Mm -hmm. I think she's saying, I do that too, yeah. in reference to what right. you said, not Being what Burl said. Track. Yeah. Uh, Lucille says, getting a vision of what God has planted in you is a terrific motivator. Yes. And Diane agrees and mm -hmm. says, desire, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's a desire of the heart. Mm hmm not just of the head. It's a desire of the heart. Mm -hmm. All right. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the classic definition of faith. I was reading this the other day, and I've always in, been taught that this entire verse is a definition of faith. Part of it is, but let's read it. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I've always read that, <coughs> that that is a, that uh, I've always read that as just a dual definition of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and faith is the evidence of things not seen. <coughs> but I, in, in looking at it within the context of hope, what the Lord brought to my attention, He said, the first part of that verse is the definition of faith. Faith is the 
substance of things hoped for. Absolutely. But then what the Lord brought to my attention, He said the last part of that verse is not the definition of faith. It's the definition of hope. In other words, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Oh, by the way, uh, if you don't know what hope is, hope is the evidence of things not seen. Hope is the ability to see into the, invis see into the invisible. Well, then, uh, <laughs> why is it evidence? Because I can see it. Well, yeah, but I don't see it. That's your problem. I do. <laughs> I see it. And like the like the thing for the webcast. I mean, who ever heard of doing a webcast from Menard? I mean, really? Mm -hmm. And in fact, I've shared this with you before, and you guys that have been around with it, uh, around when we put this together, I called Verizon on the phone. They were our provider, and I said, I want to do this. They said, you can't do that. Well, why not? Well, uh, you're at the low end of the grid, and we don't have the ability to uh, bring you enough power to upload where you can do a webcast. I said, yes, you can. No, you can't do that. We can't do that. Yes, you can. Well, how did I know? I mean, I'm no expert on this because I could see it and I knew it came from God so there had to be a way to do it. <laughs> now, I didn't know what it was, but there had to be a way to do this. And so I got off the phone with Verizon. And so I started walking around praying in the Spirit. In fact, I think I walked around back here where the city is now. I was walking around praying in the Spirit and uh, I really felt like I need, need to call Thomas. Well, Thomas Baker it runs data communications business in Angelo, and he's one of our partners. And I called Cindy before I called him, and, and I gave her the report. I said, you know, Verizon said we can't do this, and, you know, that there's no way to get this done. I said, but I was praying, and I said, I think I need to call Thomas. And she said, I think you need to call Thomas, too. So, <laughs> so I called Thomas and I said, I said, hey man, here's the deal. Here's what we've got, got going. Here's what we want to do. And Verizon said, we can't do that. He said, yeah, you can. <laughs> I said, I said, can you make that work for us? I said, sure. Or he said, sure. And I said, well, who are you going to go through? He said, Verizon. <laughs> And Verizon came out and set it up. And that was the very company that said, you can't do that. <laughs> well, I didn't know, you know. I just knew God had put the vision in there. So there's a way to make this happen. I don't care what the world says. And so the evidence of things not seen is not a definition of faith. It is a definition of hope. And when you have the evidence of things not seen on the inside of you, then faith becomes the substance to that. Now, when I, uh, when the Lord started dealing with me about this, and He said the first part of this verse is the definition of faith, the next part of the verse is the definition of hope. Hope is the evidence of things not seen. I said, well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Lord, I don't know if you know what you're talking about or not. <laughs> this contradicts everything I've been taught. <laughs> I said, now, wait a minute. I said, you said in your word in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And I said, Lord, I've taught for years that we see into the spirit realm by faith. He said, you taught it wrong. Okay. <laughs> now, he said, he said, ultimately that's true. But he said, read that again. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And then the Lord 
quickened it to me. He said, you don't see into the Spirit by faith. He said, you see into the Spirit by hope, but you walk in the Spirit by faith. We walk by faith. He didn't say, we see by faith, not by sight. He said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. You see into the Spirit by hope. You walk in the Spirit by faith. Your walk in the Spirit by faith is based on what you see in the Spirit by hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now go back to the illustration of what I just gave about dealing with Verizon. Um, I knew there was a way to make this work even when the so-called authorities said it could not be done could not be accomplished I could see it on the inside of it on the inside of me my walk was backing off praying in the spirit Lord you got a way to make this work and then receiving the instruction of the Lord call Thomas okay Thomas what do we need to do where do we go from here see now I'm walking by faith and I'm walking by faith based on what I see in the Spirit. Well, okay, we got to get a contract. Okay, we got to do this. We got to do that. Blah, blah, blah. And here we went. But we see into the Spirit by hope, but we walk in the Spirit by faith. Now, <clears throat> I shared this Sunday, there is an area when you are walking by faith people use the phrase blind faith but when you look at it from the word of god faith is not blind faith causes you to see things other people don't see faith increases your ability to see because you're seeing and walking by hope and by faith. And the way the Lord put this to me, He said hope is faith's vision. Now there are a lot of people that are walking by blind faith because they've never developed their hope. Their faith is blind because without hope then faith has no vision. Faith cannot see without hope. And so hope is faith's vision. Now I shared this Sunday that where the world is concerned, where the world is concerned, there is a certain amount of blindness where faith is concerned because you're not focused on the world, you're focused on the vision that God has put within you. Isaiah 42, 19 says, Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? When you are walking in hope and you are, or excuse me, when you are seeing by hope and you are walking by faith and you are moving in the Spirit, you do have to put your blinders on and not be moved by the negative report, not be moved by things that are going on around you in the natural. And so in that regard, you do have to be blind regarding natural things because the only thing that, that the natural will do, I mean, go back to... What they told me at Verizon, that can't be done. Well, that certainly, when I first heard that, I thought, well, I mean, immediately I was discouraged. And, I thought, well, you know, maybe I didn't hear from God. <laughs> maybe this wasn't the Lord. Maybe I missed it. <laughs> and then on the inside of me, I thought, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't miss God. 
if nothing else, I know Cindy got the same thing. <laughs> I didn't miss God. Okay, God, I'm going to hang up with this clown. And I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost until you show me what to do. And so, there, again, there is a certain area and a certain amount of blindness involved where the world is concerned. And that's true in any area of faith. That's just the way it works. You got Amen. anything online? Lucille said, Verizon obviously didn't have the same vision you did. Uh, she said, that makes sense. Unless you see it, you wouldn't know how to walk. Well, what's interesting is they did, Verizon didn't even have the same vision Thomas did. <coughs> because when I called, told Thomas, yeah, we can make that happen. Sure, we'll do this. I mean, he could see it. And it's, it was amazing to me that he used the very company that said, can't happen. Now, you know, I, and I knew what I wanted to do when I called them. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons they said it couldn't be done, and this may help somebody, one of the reasons they said it couldn't be done, well, we were on DSL like every other person in town. And, you know, I didn't know anything about it. But the, only, the, way, we, the way Thomas made it happen, we had to hold, run a very different line out here, which in, when we, in 2013, this was cutting-edge technology, they ran a whole another line out here. It's called a T1 and hooked it up. And we had to go a very different route, but we still went through Verizon. Went from, and the way we, we were set up is you went from our little T1 box to Dallas and their Verizon's offices in Dallas and then from Dallas to the world or to San Francisco through Ustream to the world. I didn't know any of that, but I didn't know I didn't know to tell them, hey, you know, come put up a T1. We want to do this. Well, Thomas did, mm -hmm. so somebody knew. See, so anyway, makes a difference who you're connected to. It makes a big difference who you're connected to. And when God has a vision for you, Amen. Preach it, sister. He has the people necessary. Yeah, that's it. That have the knowledge. Yep. The know-how. Mm-hmm. The ability to carry out the vision. Take this building, for instance. Yes, exactly. We had a lot of people that came to church then. And for Menard, it was a big church. Yep. And it was about at least four or five times bigger than it is now, the, mm -hmm. the congregation size. Mm -hmm. And when we were forced to build a building because we had no place to meet, mm -hmm. And God revealed the land. Y'all heard the story. And we got the land. We started the building. We drew the plans. The blueprint <laughs> was on a napkin mm -hmm. sitting across the street at Gonzalez Restaurant before it burned down. <laughs> and drew the plan for this on a napkin. Mm-hmm. And all of the people that were here then, they knew exactly what to do. Yeah. We're preachers. We're not building builders. We don't know, okay, what do you do first? They knew exactly what to do first. Mm -hmm. And most of them knew how to do what had to be done. Yeah. We had a we had couple of guys. One guy in particular did, did all of our electric. They were members of the church. But he did, they did all the electric for free that's not cheap I mean we had to supply the wiring and stuff conduit and all that but this guy did all the wiring for the Denver Airport International Airport I mean mm -hmm. so this is not you and, know, and they were in the congregation yeah he and his father-in-law yeah. did they were master electrician electricians and they did all the electrical work mm-hmm other people knew how to do all of all of the everything that had to be done. They knew how to pour the concrete. The guys knew how to do the foundation pad. I mm -hmm. mean, all of that kind of stuff. We didn't know what to do first. 
But they did. The only thing I knew I had to do was believe God for a whole lot of money. We did know, we did know how to believe God. <laughs> now, now, that's a good point. Yeah. We knew how to believe God yeah, was, for the vision. Yeah. They did not because they, they were mad did. at us for believing that's God. Right. That's right. Because we wouldn't go to the bank and borrow the money. That, yeah, exactly. And we got fussed and cussed and, and told how stupid that was. But we had... Our part was to have the faith to do it. To believe for the vision, the finances, and the faith. Yeah. Their part was to know how to make the physical part come into manifestation. Yep. Ta-da! Eleven months later. Yeah. They said it'll be ten years building this building. We were we were breaking ground to turnkey finished in eleven months. Yeah. We broke ground on February the fourteenth. We moved in here for our first service. July 4th. July the 4th. Mm -hmm. We didn't have all the sheetrock up. All we had was concrete, metal chairs, but we had electric and we had water, and that's all we cared and about. And air conditioning. Yeah, we had the air conditioning. <laughs> and so all we cared about was a place to sit in air conditioning and mm -hmm. bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And we had all of that. And we finished it out as, as we went from Ju uh, July until January, and we were done. Mm -hmm. In 11 months, debt-free. Mm -hmm. That's what they could not wrap their heads around, how that happened. God had all of the people in place. Yep. They had the ability. Mm -hmm. No matter what your ability, you are anointed to do that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Your expertise is not unneeded. Mm -hmm. It is very much needed. No matter what you are talented or trained in, what your knowledge and, and abilities are, it's needed in the body of Christ. Yeah. You're necessary. You are necessary. Mm -hmm. Very much so. So. Amen. And I'll quit right there. No, I think that's good. Um, Lucille says, I love the divine connections. Yes. God mm -hmm. puts us with the people that it will take to fulfill what he has called us to do. Mm -hmm. And most of you already know the rest of the story. After we got the building built, all of those people that knew how to do all of that got mad because then they wanted possession of the building. They had decided we didn't know what we were doing and they wanted us out of here. They could take it from here. <laughs> We've got a building. We're going to impress this community. And that was the words they used. We're going to impress everybody. That was the words they used. <laughs> We're going to impress this community. And all of the community will turn and come to our church. Mm -hmm. Because we, we built it by faith. <laughs> okay. So we were unnecessary at that point. Because they didn't care what. Our part was to put the word out. They didn't care about that. They wanted to impress the community. Well, number one, it didn't impress the community. That's not the purpose. That wasn't the point. They all got mad and left. But they were here when we needed them. Not for us. This mm -hmm. building doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. Why? He has a purpose and he has a plan. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's to reach the world from Menard. Mm -hmm. That's our assignment. Mm -hmm. January the 18th of 2008. Yep. Our assignment is reach the world from Menard. You have to have a place to do that. Yep. You can't sit at the house and reach the world from mm -hmm. Menard. You've got a way to get that done. Exactly. And that was the point. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Oh, anything else online? Mm -hmm. oh, no. No? No. Okay. Hebrews 11, go down to verse 17. We're still talking about hope. Hebrews 11, 17 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, we're going to get more into this next week, the promises part. 
He that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 19, watch it. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whom also he received him in a figure, a picture, the imagination of his heart. God received him, or excuse me, Abraham received him in a figure. He received him raised from the dead in a figure. Now, if, if you haven't been here, one of the things that I've been talking about, or we've been talking about, is the, the power of the communion table. And the Lord had spoken to me a few weeks ago, and he said, he said, there is no such thing as anybody going to the communion table alone. He said, anytime anyone, I mean, if you're in your closet, in your, in, in you know, somewhere by yourself and you receive communion. You never receive communion alone. He said, I always come to the communion table. Always, always, always. And I shared with you that when you go to the communion table and you receive those elements of the body and the blood, uh, when you receive those, sit back and realize that Jesus is there. He's present. He's present because he said he would be present. And as you are receiving and picturing on the inside and recognizing the fact that he is there, what you are doing is what? Receiving him raised from the dead in a figure. Jesus is alive. So, you're receiving him raised from the dead in a figure. And Paul said, do this, go to the communion table, do this in remembrance of me. Now, that's one way you can apply this area of receiving him raised from the dead in a figure. And of course, uh, Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire... When you pray, believe, and remember, believing is faith and hope working together. Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. My point here is, uh, I want you to realize, there is no way you can receive without seeing. Now that's really what a lot of people do, is they try to exercise faith without seeing. But you cannot believe that you receive without seeing. That is an element that absolutely has to be there. Faith and hope is working together. Now, we got into this to a certain extent last week, and I want to touch on this again. And here is where we're uh, going to begin to branch off into where where we're transitioning. Um, in order for Abraham to come to that place where he uh, received Isaac raised from the dead in a figure, God really, uh, he really had to do a work in Abraham's spirit. I'll explain why in just a, in just a moment. And it's an amazing thing to realize that God did this, this, this work on the inside of Abraham and brought him to this place of faith and Abraham was not even a born again man. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. How much more? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, when you look at the life of Abraham, essentially he had to believe for three things. He had to believe for the promised land. He had to believe for the birth of Isaac. And thirdly, he had to believe for 
Isaac to be raised from the dead. Of course, um, you know the story. Uh, God provided the alternative. God provided the ram. We we looked at that. Was it last week or week before? We look. We've already looked at that. Mm -hmm. um, but the point that I want you that that I want you to realize is that Adam's or Adam's Abraham's spirit was still brought to that place of receiving. But in order to come to that place, God really had to do a work on Abraham because uh, the first two things that he believed for, now he had to believe for a lot of different things, but essentially these three, when he believed for the promised land and he believed for the birth of his son, he was believing for um, earthly things. Now, none, nonetheless miraculous, nonetheless supernatural, but believing for the promised land and believing for the birth of his son was an earthly, physical thing. And for the most part, this is, this is one of the reasons God is having us shift. For the most part, what is taught in the faith movement and I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not saying it's bad or anything of the kind. But what is taught, for the most part, is how to use your faith for earthly things. And we made reference earlier to, we had to believe God for the money. You, mm -hmm. you, you got, I mean, I'm not taken away from that at all. And you, mm -hmm. you've, got to, you've got to learn how to use your faith in those areas and get your needs met. But I want you to realize that is God, God wants us walking in areas of faith that go so, so far beyond that. And when you come to this third area where Abraham had to believe for the resurrection of his son, this last thing didn't deal with physical things. This last thing was dealing with an eternal thing. This thing was dealing with things in the realm of the spirit. Because you, you need to realize the, the very concept. We, we, we read these stories. We read these things in the Bible in, in a post-resurrection of Jesus mindset. But you need to realize that, that the concept of resurrection, and in fact... Even up until the presentation of the gospel in the ministry of the Apostle Paul, the, the, he would go places and they would say, this babbler says some guy was raised, resurrected from the dead. How stupid. Nobody's raised from the dead. Well, if it was true, you know, in the book of Acts, that, that, that antagonism and that mindset and that barrier of death was there in the book of Acts how much more here in the days of Abraham the, the very idea the concept of resurrection was absolutely totally unknown in this earth nobody had ever considered that a human being could be raised from the dead or anything for that matter an animal, a plant Whatever, when it died, that's it, it's gone, it's over, it's finished. That's the barrier. You don't go beyond that. You don't go beyond the death limit. It's over. This was something that was absolutely, totally foreign because death was the limit of creation, period. And in order to do, to, in order for Abraham to come to this place where he could receive Isaac raised from the dead in a figure, there had to be a barrier broken inside his spirit, so that he could see, uh, he could see beyond that. Now, um, one of the reasons, of course, that God required that. Isaac be sacrificed was because God was in covenant with Abraham and God made that demand take now your son your only begotten son who you love take him 
to a place that I'll show you and you offer him as a burnt offering. Abraham did that. He, he was ready to stab his son. He full well expected to kill him, burn him to ashes and watch God raise him from the dead. His spirit was developed in faith to that point. But the reason God made that demand is because there would come a time about 4,000 years later in the Garden of Gethsemane mm -hmm. where God's Son mm -hmm. had to be offered. And mm -hmm. Jesus prayed and said, Father, if there's any way, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. There was no other way. There was no other means of redemption. And there was no way out because God had put himself in that box way back there in the days of Abraham because when God made that requirement and Abraham submitted to that requirement, now God was in a position, my covenant partner Abraham was willing to offer his son, I can do no less. I have no choice. And so God made that demand of Abraham in order to lock himself into a box where redemption was concerned. But, not only that, and the Lord dropped this in my spirit, that resurrection, or, or let me say it this way, God needed somebody in this earth who would be able to reach out by faith beyond that death limit and reach out in hope, in the vision of hope and see beyond that death limit and believe for the possibility and the probability of resurrection. Mm -hmm. See, again, believing is faith and hope working together. All things are possible to him who believes. believes. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about all things being possible, you have to reach beyond the natural realm. Mm -hmm. And so God, in order to release resurrection power in the earth, needed somebody who would go beyond that death limit mm -hmm. in faith and hope and believe for it because man is the one that's in authority in the earth. Now, we got something online? No. We got anything online? All right. Everyone's listening. Like I said, God had to do a work in Abraham. He had to transition. This is, let me tell you, this is where we are. God had to transition Abraham's spirit from believing for earthly things to believing for heavenly things. This is where we are. Mm hmm this is where we are. Mm -hmm. God has much more that He wants to do with your faith and mm -hmm. with your believing than just believing for the light bill and believing for the car payment and believing for, uh, you know, whatever your physical needs may be. Not mm -hmm. that that's not important. Please don't misunderstand me. But what I want you to realize is that God is wanting to take us to a new level God is wanting to take mm -hmm. us into a new realm. Now, how did God how did God prepare Abraham? Well, go with me to Genesis chapter 21. Well, let's go back to that level of faith where we're believing for the necessary things of life where you are literally believing for the water bill, the light bill, clothes for the kids for school. Uh, food on the table, all those things. You learn to use your faith on the natural 
as a preparation to yeah. believe for the spiritual. Yeah, but and but the 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 problem. I don't know that that's even the right word. But the issue, I believe, at this point. Now I'm speaking for people like you and me that have been doing this a day or two. That's where it stops. For a lot of people. For a lot of people. That's where it stops. Mm -hmm. But th think, the very first thing you and I, every single one of us, every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we did not believe God for a natural thing. That's it right. started in That's the spiritual, right. spiritual realm. Amen. That's right. We had to believe for something we still can't see. Yeah. And believe that when we prayed, it it was done. New birth. New birth. Amen. That's not natural. No, it's That's not. That's spiritual. That started, yeah, amen. That started so off in the spirit. faith <laughs> begins in the spirit. Amen. With but, a spiritual and, thing you cannot see. And you hear, you hear this as a as a cliche but it's absolutely the truth there is no greater miracle than the recreation of the absolutely human spirit. and god works in circles he yep. works there you in go. there you go mm -hmm. cycles circles yep and he starts in the spirit he will use the natural and what we believe for in the natural as a demonstration of See, this is no big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that we go beyond mm -hmm. believing for the natural things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Righteousness is not natural. That's right. The kingdom of God is mm -hmm. not natural. That's right. And I, I don't know how much liberty this is to take and say, exchange the word seek for believe. Yeah, it's, yeah. For yeah. the kingdom yeah. of God and His it, righteousness. Yeah. It is. You can't seek without believing. That's right. Because you're headed you, towards something. Yeah. You're back to hope. Yeah. Seek mm -hmm. you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. What things was he talking about? What you eat, what you drink, what you wear. That's exactly what I was going to... When you were talking about that, I was thinking about that too. It's not that you're leaving the aspect of believing for natural things, but when you step over into an area where you're believing for the eternal, mm -hmm. the natural things are absorbed. Mm -hmm. it, it just kind of all gets... Well, he it's said, don't you know you. that your father already knows that you need these natural things? Yeah. He really wants you to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. He really wants you to go beyond just saying, God, I've got to have groceries. I've got to have school, clo school clothes for the kids. I've got to have gas in the car. Those are natural things, and he's aware of that. Mm -hmm. And we have to have those things And if to that's function. where you are, I don't get under <clears throat> condemnation. No, no, that's no, no, where no. you are. That's not the point. There's not anything in the natural realm, just so you will know, that we are not believing for. Mm -hmm. We have our faith extended for a lot of things, mm -hmm. for a lot of money. I had a dream a couple of nights ago. I won't tell you the amounts. But in the dream, I was... Asking the Lord for an amount of money. And he said, that's not enough. And I said, why not? He said, you're going to need this amount. Well, it was many, 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 many times over what I was asking for. It was a very large amount. And I said, okay. And when I woke up, that dream was very real to me. And I told him, I said, this is the instruction of the Lord. So we've been calling our money, calling that amount to us. We're, and, and in the dream, <coughs> pardon me, I said, why that much? He said, you're going to need it. He's already ahead of it. That's something I can't see for something that's coming that I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. that's said, in the and, you, and it goes back to, and Diane made reference to it um, earlier today on Facebook. Um, that's, that's part of angelic activity. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. 
So, yes, we believe God for all of the natural things. All of the, we have bills just like y'all do. Mm -hmm. And it takes believing God to cover all of the natural things. But we're reaching far beyond that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're looking towards something much greater than a car payment. Mm -hmm. Much greater than food on the table. Use your faith for all of it. Mm -hmm. But use your greater faith for those things of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'll watch. Uh, no, that's a good <laughs> word. Absolutely. Good word. Anything online? Mm -mm. Nothing? Okay. Um, I got into this last week. Let me let me do this again. Faith comes how? Faith comes by, by hearing, hearing and, and hearing by the word of God. God. Now, if you if you look at Romans ten seventeen in the Greek text, it literally says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the spoken word of God. Faith comes by the spoken word. Listen to me carefully because I don't, you know, listen, just listen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the spoken word. Faith does not come by the written word. Now, what comes by the written word is hope. We'll get into that more next week, but the reason that is the case is because the written word Word contains the promises of God. And again, we'll deal, we'll deal more with that later on. Now, I didn't put this in PowerPoint, mainly because I forgot. Um, but you go to the written word for hope. And you go to the written word for first but listen to Romans 15 4 you can just write this down I'm sorry I didn't get it in PowerPoint but Romans 15 4 listen for whatsoever things were written 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 whatsoever things were written afore or four time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures what is written might have hope now, what happens as you read, meditate, study what is written, hope begins to rise in your spirit because of the promises of God that are in His Word. Hope is produced by the promises of God. And as you read and you meditate and you study the written Word of God, hope rises up on the inside of you. Now, as you well know, as you read and meditate and study the Word of God, you, you will at some point hear the voice of God on the inside of you. God will quicken verses. God will mm -hmm. quicken words on the inside of you, and it will no longer be something you're reading. It becomes something you're hearing. Mm -hmm. Because God starts talking to you mm -hmm. out of the Scriptures, and when He starts talking to you out of the scriptures now faith is present mm -hmm. and faith becomes the substance of things hoped for the voice of God is the substance of what is written and as I've said as I said to you last week you you study the written word to find out what God has said when you find out what God has said, then you will find out what God is saying. And so, you go to the written word for hope. 
then you hear the voice of God as you read and meditate and study the written word and faith begins to rise up. Okay. Have you found Genesis 21 yet? <laughs> so the voice of God is activated by what we see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Romans 15, 17, is that was, that was the reference? No, Romans 15, 4. 4. All right. Uh, Trixie says something here. Okay. Um, let's see. What does Trixie say? When we bought this house two years ago, I felt on the inside of me that the Lord was telling me that this was not my forever home, much to my dismay. Well, in the past couple of months, we have had several realtors contact us asking if we would be willing to sell. My lightning fast mind just realized yesterday that this could be God trying to get me to the next level of believing and trusting and receiving what he has said. It was almost as if God whispered, remember what I said? Yep, mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were preparing it for someone else. Well, and, and again, that goes back to the Spirit of God will bring things to your remembrance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll, just, I'll throw this out at you just as a tidbit, as, as one of those, like an old grade B cereal where you know what to come to the picture show and watch next week. The Lord dropped a word in my spirit and, and, um, and I started seeing it in the Scriptures. Actually, I didn't see it in the Scriptures first. The Lord dropped it in my spirit and then I started seeing it. But he said this to me. He said, truth is not about doctrine. He said, truth is a destination. The Spirit will lead you and guide you into all the truth. Truth, truth is a destination. And Whew. where you're headed is in what you're looking at or what you're dealing with, Trixie, is you are headed towards truth. You're stepping into truth. We worship Him in spirit. spirit and in truth. And in truth. Yeah. And there are people that never get there. There are people that are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They never get There's to the destination. There's your spirit realm. Believe for the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Believe for the truth. Yeah. Amen. Robert Davis says, As I was reading Second Timothy 2.2, 2, the Lord talked to me and faith came alive. That's right. Yes, Amen. sir. That's it. Amen. That's Amen. it. That's it. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, and as that Second Timothy two two became the pattern of what you're you're developing now, and that's that's awesome. All right, Genesis chapter twenty one. We got into this last week, so we're just going to touch on it because I got somewhere I need to go, and I'm just about out of time. But. Um, Verse 33 of Genesis 21 says, And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the land of the Philistines many days. Now, I don't know what you have in your translation, but in verse 33, in the last part of that verse, where he says he began to call on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God, that phrase, the everlasting God, is a, is a covenant name of God. It literally is El Olam. El meaning supreme. Olam means eternal, everlasting. Uh, the the um, uh, eternal, ever-enduring one. The unchangeable one. And so... What happened, God revealed himself to Abraham in the name of El Olam. And in doing so, what he, was, what he was unveiling to Abraham and revealing to him was, I am the God who endures forever. And he began to show him uh, that he was the God who transcended time. He is the eternal, everlasting God. And he is the God who transcends time. Death. Death is no big deal to God. Death, uh -huh. death is tied to this natural realm. Death means nothing to God. God is greater than death. God transcends death. And so God began to give him that uh, 
revelation of himself in that name. And what God is doing was doing here was preparing Abraham for what was what was to come. And God began to give him that revelation. And Abraham began to call on that name. He began to, when God dropped that name in his spirit, he began to praise God and magnify El Olam. And he began to draw strength and he began to draw revelation from that name as he began to praise God in that name. And as he began to do that, revelation began to develop inside his spirit. Now it says here that he planted a grove. The literal Hebrew says he planted, one tra some translations have the word terebinth tree, uh, NIV says tamarisk tree. Uh, but regardless of the translation, what he did was plant a grove of evergreen trees. You've got to realize Abraham didn't have a Bible. But he had learned from God, start developing your hope. And he learned from God to do that when, he, when God promised him Isaac, when God promised him a son. Genesis 15, 5, he told Abraham, come out here, come, come, come out here, come outside, get out of the tent, get over here. Lift up your eyes and look. See if you're able to number the stars, so shall your seed be. And hope began to develop on the inside of Abraham, not just for Isaac, but for succeeding generations. In the very next verse, Genesis 15, 6, says, And Abraham believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. righteousness. The believing began with hope. And so Abraham learned to do that. So he's getting this revelation of God is El Olam and he needs something to focus on. He needs something to look at. We have a Bible. We look at the scriptures. But he planted this evergreen tree. Grow. So regardless of what was going on around him, regardless of whether there was rain, there was drought, regardless of what the desert looked like, whether it was green through rain or whether it was just dirt like West Texas, um, didn't really matter that 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 evergreen grove stayed the same and he'd go out and just look at his trees and meditate and think about El Olam and so he would focus on that and look at that and God began to develop that revelation in his spirit and see what we do is we look at the written word and we focus on that and we focus on the promises of God just like uh, Robert, Brother Robert said earlier, God gave him 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. That's his focal point. That's, that's his evergreen tree. That's, mm -hmm. his, that's his, he's looking at that and hope is being birthed in his spirit from that. And then as he, as he meditated on that, God mm -hmm. spoke to him. And faith, faith began to rise inside his mm -hmm. spirit. And mm -hmm. so this is what Abraham did. And Abraham meditated on that, and that, that, that revelation of El Olam began to develop in his spirit. It says here in the King James, it says in, in the very last verse, And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. But if you study it out, you find out he was there for 20 years. <laughs> See, this, the process of believing sometimes can take a very long time. 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20 years to come to that place. But then there was a point after 20 years, chapter 22 and verse 1 says, And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, here, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and get you into the land of Moriah and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the, one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And so... Now, this has gone from a revelation from looking at an evergreen tree to a word from heaven. But the faith was there to do it. And he received him raised from the dead in a figure. It was there. Now, mm -hmm. um, let me share this with you. Um, 
Go with me to Romans chapter 8. How do you get over into the eternal? We're starting to run short of time, so I'm going to just go, go to this. Um, let me give you this scripture, and then we're going to read Romans 8. Ephesians 3.20, you all know it, says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. It's interesting to realize, for example, in Abraham's day, the very concept of resurrection was beyond all that anyone could ask or think totally foreign to all of humanity and now here we are uh, 4,000 years later and we're all those of us who know Jesus we're all believing for resurrection ourselves you know that is not a concept that is beyond all we can ask or think because we know Jesus has been raised from the dead we know mm -hmm. that and so that is that's not beyond all that we ask or think, but there's still things out there in the realm of the Spirit that's certainly beyond all that we can ask or think. So how are we going to get there? Well, Romans chapter 8. I'll leave this, leave this with you and we'll pick it up here. And, and by the way, go, go to the podcast. I go into this in a little more detail in the podcast. Um... But verse 24 of Romans 8, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? Or if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Verse 26, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Why? Because we're dealing with things beyond all we can ask or think. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind or the plan of the Spirit because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image. <laughs> image, we're back to image again. To the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. All of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are on the inside of Jesus. Beyond all that we can ask or think is on the inside of Jesus. Well, the Spirit of God is on the inside of us. Jesus said that the Spirit would take those things of mine and show it to you. How are you going to do that, Holy Ghost? You pray in the Spirit and it births hope inside your spirit. You begin to see beyond what you can ask or think. And God starts you off with where you are in that. Uh, again, go back to setting up the webcast. Uh, Putting this thing together was beyond all I could ask or think. And particularly when you got the phone company saying, no, you can't do that. That was beyond all that we ask or think. So what was, what was, the, what was my response? I'm going to pray in the Spirit. Because mm -hmm. God had already dropped that vision inside mm -hmm. both of us to do this. Mm -hmm. So all right, Lord, what's the, next, what's the next thing here? 
Pray in the Spirit. Make this phone call. Do this. Go here. Do that. Mm -hmm. Say that. Go this direction. Mm -hmm. Make this turn. Move here. Mm -hmm. Move there. Mm -hmm. And so you step into that realm by the prayer language of the Spirit. That's why when you pray in tongues, it's beyond your intellect. Because that's what catapults you into that realm. Mm -hmm. So, Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you before we leave tonight. So praying in the Holy Ghost, you are, by faith, seeing into the Spirit because you expect to see because of what the Spirit is praying through you. Yeah. Well... can't quit. <laughs> that like, mess you up. No, 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 no. I want to show you something. Um, go back to Hebrews 11 for just a second. I saw this today. I'll touch on it Sunday and I'll touch on it next week. But I'll... Hebrews 11? Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 11 again. <laughs> um, Hebrews 11, verse 27. Talking about Moses. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed... Excuse me. Lest... He that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Um, there's a, three places, I believe. No, four places. In Hebrews 11. You know, you read down through Hebrews 11, you read, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by mm -hmm. faith, by faith, mm -hmm. by faith. Mm -hmm. but I was reading down through there this morning, and the thing that caught my attention, and in verse 3, uh, verse 11, verse 28, and... Verse 33. So four places. I don't know how many years I've been reading this. But it caught my attention that instead of using the phrase by faith, it says through faith. By faith, by faith, by faith, and then through faith. So I started looking at it and, and doing a little bit of digging the same Greek word but one's translated by and the other is translated through but you you um, look at it and, and in the just like in English there are different cases for verbs and different things and I, I don't know anything about this because I hated grammar in school and didn't pay attention so, I still hate grammar. But, what I realized is that the, the, it's the same Greek word. It's the word dia. D-I-A. And the dia, dia is, is, a, is a preposition in Greek that means through the instrumentality of it. Through, through this instrument, such and such. But, in these, for example, in these two verses, in we're talking about uh, Moses. Verse twenty-seven is by faith he forsook Egypt. So, on. verse twenty-eight, through faith he kept Passover. In the first, by faith is with everything. In the rest of this chapter where it says by faith, is the word dia, in the genitive case. Where it's through faith, it's the word dia in the dative case. So then what's that? Well, I have no clue. But in looking at it, what I began to realize that 
in the genitive case where it says, by faith, Moses did so and so and so and so. It was a, it was a matter of them having the faith and making the decision to use it or to do whatever it was. By faith, they did this. They made the decision. By faith, Abraham obeyed, went out to a place he didn't know where he was going. By faith, he offered Isaac. By, he made the decision, I, I, this faith is on the inside of me and this is what I'm going to do by faith. In other words, it came out of the decision. His actions came out of the decision. But when it comes to Dia in the Dadiv case, it is actually faith, somebody walking by faith, not because he made a decision to use his faith, but he's walking by faith because the faith is motivating him to do it. The first part is coming out of the guy's decision. He was the motivator. Mm -hmm. He had the faith and decided, I'm going to do this. But here he's being motivated by faith mm -hmm. to do it. And so, I'm not sure why I got over into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you were asking. That I don't remember what you were asking that motivated me to say that. There are times. Or let's let's go back to. Um, Brother, Robert here just a minute ago because we know that how God's dealing with him and. Mm -hmm. uh, God quickened him. Second Timothy two two. And God dro started dropping things mm -hmm. like He did with us on the webcast. Mm -hmm. This was a deal of assignment where mm -hmm. God said, do this. The faith itself was motivating him. This wasn't something of he decided, I'm going to use my faith and believe God for da, da, da. This was, this was an assignment dropped in his spirit. The faith itself is motivating him to do this. That's the dative area. And there are times when God does that. Mm -hmm. Then there will be times when God says, uh, or, or you're required to make the decision of, I'm going to believe God for whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure. I don't remember what we were talking about. We were talking about, I said that what we see, the Word, what we see activates the voice of God. Yeah, that's it, the activation part. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. you are act, Sometimes you are activated. That's the dative. And sometimes you activate. That's the genitive. That's that's the point. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Lucille says, I have a quote from Dr. Kenneth Hyatt dated September 4th, 2016. I don't believe a word of it. Which says, hope is also the revelation of your destination. Yep. I understand this a lot better now. Yep. It is. And I don't know, I'm going to throw this out at you because I trust you're mature enough to handle it because, and I don't know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> so, we were talking about this earlier, talking about angels. Um, I'm convinced that in dealing with angels, like even go back to the finances, that when God told you for the dream. I believe there are angels working in our present and there are angels working in our future because mm -hmm. they transcend time mm -hmm. and you know the seraphim when they flew around they it says they cried one to another holy 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 is the lord god almighty i believe there are angels working in our present calling to the angels in the future and the angels in the future are calling back to us and they are bringing us, bringing us into our destiny. Mm -hmm. And they're working together outside the realm of time mm -hmm. to bring us where we're supposed to be. Now see, there's your spiritual application of going beyond believing for the natural stuff that we all believe for and going into the Spirit and say, I'm, I'm, I trust 
the Spirit of God is working in my behalf and the angels are moving. They are sent as ministering spirits for mm -hmm. us to fulfill what God has shown us and told us to do. Well, and I've given this classic story before. I know what time it is, sorry. But I've given this classic story before of when we had a carpet cleaning business, we had a particular bill that was $750 a month. And pull it, getting that bill for the, I mean, it's like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. And we got behind and the banker called and, you know, we've been there. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have the money in by Friday, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm repossessing your world, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so I went up to church. I started praying. And I'm praying. And, oh, God, we got to have money by the end of the month. You know, we got to have it by the end of September. By the end of September, Lord, we got to have such and such money. And I, you know, I'm, I'm bawling and squalling, crying the blues. Oh, Lord, we got to have so much money by the end of September. And the Lord spoke up on the inside of me. He said, uh, he said, in November, I want you to do such and such. And I said, Lord, I don't care about November. I said, Lord, we need We such ain't making and such. it to November if you don't take care of it. <laughs> and so, Lord, Lord, I need, now, we need to talk about September here because, I, you know, I need this amount of money because if I don't have this amount of money by the end of September, it's over. And the Lord said, in November, I need you to do such and such. That was about three or four times he told me that. And then finally, my lightning fast mind caught it. I thought, okay, if he's talking to me about November, then I guess he's got September taken care of. <laughs> September and okay. October both, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and, but that, that goes, like I said, that goes beyond the time factor. He's ta He was talking mm -hmm. to me about stuff. It's like, I've already got this paid, mm -hmm. but you shut up. I want to deal with you about some other mm -hmm. things. And so. Well, and that's a real good lesson, and, and we are hurrying, believe it or not. That's a real good lesson when you're so focused on your present need and what you need, need, need right now. Just go ahead and jump out by faith and go on beyond that as though it's already done. Mm -hmm. And believe for the next thing beyond that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, believe for the next thing beyond that and just that literally is... Casting the whole of your care over on that him. That is. For that he cares is. for you. Okay, God, I'm going to act like that's already taken care of. Even though the electric company said 3 o'clock this afternoon, it's, it's, that's it. I'm going to act like it's already taken care of. That is faith. Mm -hmm. And that is saying, okay, we're going to go beyond that and say, after I have the electric bill paid, I'm going to, um, you know, I'd really like to give Seeds of victory about, a, oh, I don't know, $500. Yeah, start believing for that. Keep those cards and letters coming yeah. in, folks. See, go beyond uh, what's natural. Go into something beyond where we are. Yeah. Amen. Well, that's exactly, somebody asked Brother Hagin one time, said, how would you define faith? And he said, I'm just going to act like the New Testament so. Mm-hmm. I've thought about that definition so many times. That really just simplifies everything. I'm just going to mm -hmm. act like the Bible's true. <laughs> and in our faith, just go on beyond where we are. Yeah. And what we've asked for. Uh -huh. And go to the next thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Robert Davis says, that is true. Uh, the faith is driving me. Yeah. And yeah. the Ungers can't wait for October. Very good. Well, I'm we glad, glad you said that. October 11th, 12th, and 13th. Mm-hmm family meeting and you guys need to be here i think it's going to be good mm -hmm. i don't know what all we're going to do Everybody's but i think gonna it's going to be good yeah. and please if you have not please go online go mm -hmm. to seedsofvictory.org fill out a registration form if mm -hmm. you have not don't sit there and say well they know i'm coming well no just, just send do it. it yeah we mm -hmm. need the count please mm -hmm. so yes um, yes, October 11, 12, and 13, and it will be here very soon because can you believe this is Labor Day weekend? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, and we don't have a plan again. Oh, well. So, 
Y'all be here for family meeting. It's going to be very good. And thank you all for being yes. here tonight. Yes. We appreciate you. We enjoy you. You're a blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for being here. Yes. God bless you. Father, we just yes. bless your people. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We will see y'all next week. Good night. Good night.